Cardano blockchain optimizations are already in full swing. In a short number of days, it looks like we're going to see bigger blocks and more Plutoscript memory. In a short number of hours, we're going to see a much bigger map in one of Cardano's biggest metaverses. Ready? Let's go. We're going to discuss the eToro delisting. Oh no, it's disaster rock. Not really. We're also going to discuss the block size and Plutus script memory increases, the new Pavia Ready Player Me avatars, and of course, the big fun item, the Pavia second land cell. I'll bet you thought we were covering Pavia last. Nope, we're covering it right now. But as always with these metaverse NFTs, you should know this is not a discussion about anybody investing in anything, anybody making a return off anything. This is not about anybody making money. We're talking about buying pieces that might be used in a game. That's all. That brings up another risk. We don't know if they'll actually build it, guys. We've got a little execution risk here. I mean, we're all hoping they actually build out a metaverse, and that's why we're buying these pieces to play this game. But we don't know who the team is, and we don't know, will a metaverse ever actually materialize? Maybe they'll fail, maybe they just won't build it. We don't know, because we don't know who they are, and we don't know what's going to happen. So there's a possibility the metaverse never gets built out. So if you buy any of these NFTs related to these, these metaverses, just kiss that money goodbye and hope the metaverse actually gets built up. In any case, I'm fully expecting that all of these NFTs will lose like 90% plus of their value in the next bear market or before or after at some point in the future. So don't be buying these as some kind of investment. But having said that, We've got quite a bigger map here. The map has gotten quite a bit bigger. So originally, we just kind of had these areas where you can see these JPEGs. These JPEGs are all uh, estate holders. These are people who have three by three plots, and they were allowed to put JPEGs there, sort of representing themselves or whatever group they're part of, uh, what have you. <laughs> and you can see these open greenish areas are the expanded parts of the map. This is where the parcels that are sold tomorrow will be i'm led to believe anyways and this includes some new areas up here this gray stuff these gray parcels these are mountain parcels down below here these greenish these dark greenish parcels these are labeled as trees they're kind of like forest parcels i think we've also got some new bodies of water including this one with a little sand this one with a little sand and it's also a uh, tree surrounded um and we've got we've got a couple of new features too we've got this thing which is a stadium we've got this piece over here which is a launch pad i believe it's labeled as a launch pad i have no idea what that's going to be uh this i believe is a pa over here on the left this is a pavia portal this little pixel is alone up here in the the top kind of left of center we've got i believe that's another pavia portal and i think over here on the on the top right this little pics this little uh image is all known as another pavia portal another big surprise we got is that the the area that people were referring to as the main island it's actually more of a peninsula according to this it looks like it's connected to what previously seemed like a standalone piece of land up here and on the other side of this bay area we have another stretch of sand so again we're not seeing uh how big the map could possibly be there have been no edges of the map sort of defined so we don't know how much further out the map could go maybe this thing keeps growing forever we don't really know uh this isn't bitcoin we don't have like a hard cap number on the total uh amount of parcels that could exist in in pavia so we don't really know how much bigger this map could get it looks like these uh, uh these um undeveloped areas are what is going to be sold tomorrow i have no idea if the mountain areas will get sold if the forest areas will get so sold or if those are more like the sand areas in that those can't be sold i think we're going to find out tomorrow for myself though i'm a, I, i'm not i don't think i don't think i'm actually going to mint 
because when you mint, it's kind of a random draw, or at least it was in the first land cell. It's kind of a random draw. So you might end up with, you know, a bunch of unconnected pieces. You're likely to end up with a bunch of pieces all over the map. And, you know, I mean, that's that's probably fine for a lot of people. I think I'm more interested in kind of picking and choosing because I actually want to use these parcels to build things, to play this game. I, I might be more interested in sort of picking and choosing the parcels once I can see where they're situated. So I may actually just wait for the secondary market and maybe try to snipe a few parcels off the secondary market. Not many though. As always, my lot my Ada Lobster Claw, very tight. Only releases Ada on very, very small number of occasions. <laughs> so I don't know if I'll be minting tomorrow, but who knows? Maybe I'll decide that Pavia parcels, you know, might be a good gift for friends and family or something. I'll mint a few. Just, uh, just so I can kind of give those away to my friends, uh, but um, but I may not. I may just wait for the secondary market and try to swipe, or try to uh, snipe a few, uh, or try to uh, snipe a few, uh, a few choice parcels. We'll we'll see how it all goes down. But uh, I hope nobody goes crazy tomorrow and uh, spends any money they're not willing to kiss goodbye because there are a lot of uncertainty still. The mystery of the Pavia avatars was also kind of solved we had those sort of like background avatars that they uh they threw on their website but they hinted there was more going on here and there is it looks like they have partnered with ready player me who brands himself as kind of providing interoperable avatars across different metaverses and games and things like that and they've got like a whole character builder in here so you can create for yourself some kind of cyber stormtrooper like this or if you just want to look like a regular guy wearing a suit in this case a suit and something ridiculous on your head you can also do that so you can go through and pick everything from hair and facial hair and sunglasses makeup all that kind of stuff you can do whatever you want with your avatar um I have no idea what this, how this is going to work inside the metaverse one day if they actually build it out, but uh, this is definitely a huge step up from uh, the uh, pixelated blocks we had in the past. Recently, we talked about how the Cardano approach has been to build first for correctness and then later on go after all the optimizations, and it looked like 2022 was going to be the year for optimizations, whereas so far, building has been for correctness. It looks like that might be happening a little bit sooner than we thought. So a few different posters on Twitter noticed something that I think went largely unnoticed. IOHK's new director of Cardano Architecture, John Woods, put out this article on November 21st. And at first glance, the article looks like he's going to explain in writing a lot of the same things he's explained in interviews and on podcasts, that kind of thing. But then we get down here to this section, and I think what a lot of people didn't notice, myself included, is that he actually laid out a timeline for some of these optimizations, and it's a very quick timeline. He says, we anticipate subsequently applying these, I'll explain what these are, to the main net, taking effect on Epic 306 on Wednesday, December 1st, 2021, and he gives an exact time, right? Of course, this is just uh, the, the changeover of the epics, but... This is December 1st, and the changes are big ones. We're increasing block size by 8KB to 72KB, which is a 12.5% increase. He's not saying from 8 to 72, in which case 12.5 wouldn't make sense. He's saying it's an 8KB, 12.5% increase, resulting in a block size of 72KB. They're also increasing Plutus script memory units per transaction, again, by 12.5%. So if you wanted some optimization out of your blockchain, it looks like John Woods wasn't messing around when he mentioned this in a few interviews. He, this is all happening right now. If this is how fast they can get to increasing block size, I can't wait to see what they do in terms of optimization over the course of the entire calendar year of 2022. This next item definitely got everybody pretty freaked out today. So the exchange eToro made this notice important users will not be able to open new cardano or tron positions starting on december 26 2021 and in other places i think they they um 
chalk this up to regulatory concerns or something something like that. And so of course everybody freaked out, you know, what what is this all about? Is there a problem? And it was a little bit unclear for a second exactly what was going on cuz this kind of this definitely kind of came out of left field. Charles of course jumped on and tried to address it really quickly in a video. I'm glad he did. He basically said, "Hey, we have no idea. We don't know what's going on here." Uh, Etoro hasn't talked to us about it, us being IOHK. Obviously, we've got multiple entities in Cardano. We've got IOHK, which is kind of in charge of infrastructure development. And then we've got the Cardano Foundation, which is more in charge of things like outreach to exchanges. But Charles basically said, hey, we haven't heard anything from Etoro on our side. And we certainly haven't received anything indicating there's any kind of regulatory issue whatsoever going on. Haven't received a thing from any of the regulators. Uh, nothing, uh, nothing that's concerning, at least. And he said, "Hey, you know, Etoro is you know kind of like a middling size exchange. It's certainly, at least in my neck of the woods, it's certainly not as well known as Coinbase or Kraken." And I don't think it plays as big a role in the liquidity of Cardano as some of these larger exchanges. You know, it's not the tiniest, most obscure exchange ever. But Charles also points out, hey, during the same period, uh, we had Bitstamp decide to list Cardano for the first time. And, you know, I mean, Bitstamp, Charles pointed out in the video, but it's also true for me. Uh, Bitstamp was one of the big exchanges back in the day before when I first got into uh, into crypto in that 2012-2013 period, we were kind of just seeing the end of the Mt. Gox era, which turned out to be a good thing once we learned what was going on in Mt. Gox. And then we saw there was kind of this scramble to fill that vacuum. And one of the very early exchanges was Bitstamp. And obviously Bitstamp was based, um, it was, was more oriented towards sort of the European crypto sphere, but it was always one of those early, early exchanges. And the fact that Bitstamp finally meant finally decided to list Cardano. Uh, you know, probably means a lot more than Etoro deciding for whatever reason not to list Cardano. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I'm hoping Charles said he hopes you know we hear something out of the Cardano Foundation. Um, you know, because they they're the ones who are actually interacting with these exchanges. Uh, obviously, IOHK gives the exchanges you know, technical support where it's appropriate and even lets the exchange, uh, the uh, technical people at the exchanges talk to IOHK engineers, you know, where it's helpful to the exchanges, but it's really the the CF's wheelhouse, this dealing with exchanges. So we'll see what we hear at the Cardano Foundation. At the time of recording, I can't yet find anything out of the Cardano Foundation or Frederick Gard's uh, tw Twitter account um, commenting on eToro. But to be honest, I'm not really that concerned about it. I mean, I don't think I've ever really even been nearly tempted to investigate using eToro for anything. And I've never heard any of my friends even mention wanting to use eToro. Um, that's probably just a geographic thing in my neck of the woods. Seems like nobody really uses eToro. I'm sure some people do, but nobody I know does. So anyways, at least in my neck of the woods, probably not much of an impact, so I'm not too concerned about it. But I hope you're having a great week, and I will talk to you tomorrow.